Yo, yo. Jonathan Huberto. Jonathan Huberto. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the Puck and Stuff podcast, episode 8 of Flames Talk. We got a little bit of stuff going around the league right now, and this episode is also sponsored by, well, a man can dream. Oh, a man can dream. Oh, yes, he can. Okay, where should I truly start this? Well, <laughs> what should we say first off, I think, before we get into the Flames Talk here is, Congratulations to Team Canada. Oh and, yeah, they... uh, their greatest goalie of all time, Mason McTavish. That was a crazy. <laughs> that was crazy, man. Wow, wow, just that was a crazy sight. Oh my god, that that's a lot of ice. <laughs> oh my god, I can't that even was... I can't even fathom that, dude. That was nuts. <laughs> well, the fr- I saw it, and the first thing I thought was Matthew could chuck hands, and then got kind of sad. But they got happy again because we uh we got some signings. Yes, yes, we do. About. I just want to say if that that puck would have went in and Finland would have won gold if his stick. If he didn't have the hand-eye for that, oh my god, that was amazing. But yes, we do have some signings for the Flames, and we do have some uh, Flames talk to talk about today. And should I just go right into it? I think what we should do is have a moment of silence here for Flames legend, Sean Money Monaghan. All right, yes, we got to pay our respect. Sean Money Monaghan. Sean Money Monaghan, yes. Um, Thank you for your years in Calgary. I... Was very skeptical at first of you, but injuries kind of did it. I'm sorry, man. That I hope for the best in Montreal. I hope for the best, and also that first round pick. That I think it was from Florida. <laughs> Too many conditionals, man. Okay, so future considerations. We'll get into the trade here, and then I want to say a few words about Monahan just because. It's, it's fair. I mean, come on. He was, that that era is done now, right? Yeah. So. It's it's Monty. It's so. Monty. What happens is the Habs get, they win this trade. We all know this. No one's not going to be like, well, whatever. Sean Monaghan goes to Montreal and the 2025 first round pick, which is a conditional. There's too many conditions for me to even speak on. Like, for example, one of the scenarios, in the event Calgary receives Florida's 2025 first round pick, if both Calgary and Florida picks are not top 10, Montreal will receive the better of the Calgary and Florida 2025 first round picks. Result to be determined. And it keeps going and going and going. I mean, you can read into it if you want, but honestly, I don't think it will matter too, too much unless, you know, the next dat suit comes from one of those guys. Okay, I just jinxed it. So the yeah. next dat suit is going to come from this guy. You're welcome, Habs fans. You deserve it. And Flames acquire future considerations. So I'm actually really hyped about this guy. He's a great player. Really heavy on the really heavy on the body there. I think he's got great hands. And, yeah, it's going to be a great fit on that, uh, on that, that top uh, – Center. There's a lot of potential position. with these uh, f- future considerations. You never know what could happen with them. No, it's just a, anything is possible in this league. But anyways, back to <laughs> the actual Sean Monaghan. We do have some words to say about Mo- Sean Monaghan. He ended uh, his Flames career. He was a Flame uh, the whole time since he's been drafted. He was drafted in 2013, uh, first round, sixth overall pick. It was one of our highest uh, picks, I believe, in the franchise so far. I think Kachuk was also number six, if I'm correct as well, when he got drafted. In his NHL career so far, Sean Monaghan has played 656 games. He's put up 212 goals with 256, adding up to 462 points with a plus-minus of minus 46. That's not the greatest, but yeah. He... Ultimately, with, with Monaghan... I always I always had a special place in my heart for him. He really was one of my favorite players on the team. And man, before his injuries, he was a dynamic player. Man, could he vented Goodrow so well. Yeah. Right? Before because Chuck and Lindholm, you know, took that spot. I, I remember when it was Lindholm, Goodrow, Monahan. Oh. That was a great line. That was. And then it was yeah. like Monahan, Goodrow, Hitler. Oh remember my that god. Oh back, that was back in that was like that brought me back to memories of like their crazy. playoff run back in 2015 oh that brought back memories man but it's just it's sad you know i i think i think he can bounce back it's gonna be tough with injuries but he's an athlete right an athlete's persistent and he i can tell he's excited to be with the montreal canadians i saw in his interviews smiling a lot and he deserves it you know he deserves to have a second chance and i think a, a, a a place like Montreal, I think, will be pretty good, right? Younger team, so I think he'll automatically already have a spot once he's healthy again. And, well, of course, he's going to have a spot. What am I saying? But yeah, I think, I think so. there are some players that he would be able to uh, 
gain some chemistry quickly with, right? Yeah. Especially with those, I think those younger stars. So uh, that'll be fun to see. I mean, I think I'm gonna kind of root for Montreal now a little bit just because of Monaghan, right? So that, I think I just kind of do it. So yeah, that's very valid. There's that's nothing. Valid. It's crazy. The difference between like Monaghan and Kachuk and Goudreau is like there is no drama to this, right? It wasn't like some high school like drama thing going on, right? Yeah. That's what I felt. That's what it felt like with Goudreau, man. It really did. So. With uh, Monaghan, it's like, you know what? It happened. It had to happen. We all knew it had to happen. It's just sad, but, you know, it's an end of an era. So it is, and you got to move on. So, you know, look to the future, I guess, but. Yeah, I'm but sorry. I think Monaghan had so much potential to be like a franchise first uh, line center for us. That's what we drafted him for, but. At the end of the day, I think injuries totally mm. killed him because, like, 100%. both hip, uh, hip surgery too, man. Hip surgery on, I believe, both sides, wrist surgery, just multiple uh, bunch of surgeries for him. And to be honest, I think this was the best move for him because he he was having a rough time with Calgary for the last mm. couple of years. You even saw it. He he yeah, put up like yeah, he's still a sixty point player when healthy. Oh and yeah, that's what I was still kind of like. There's Imagine some... if we had a full healthy Monahan last year at thirty thirty player. That's still amazing to have for a team. But I think this will be a great fresh start for Monahan going to a young core. Maybe he could even give that kind of leadership role to such a younger core. That's kind of going. He, he did win, wear an A, right? Yeah, he did wear an A, so he does have that uh, kind of team leadership for sure. So we'll have to see what he does with Montreal. But the good news is, so the bad news actually, we did lose Monahan. But the good news is, we did clear up some cat space, and the Flames did make a big move, a big yeah. splash in free agency. I'm just going to straight up say it. We acquired Nazem Kadri from free agency, a 7x7 seven seven deal. $7 million for seven years. I did call it. You did? I, think you I did, did call it. I did I did say after we got Huberto, I wouldn't be surprised if we tried going for Kadri. You though. know what's just as surprising as we us getting Kadri? is well, the what's fact that? that, well, I was just looking at our the Flames franchise goal leaders. Monaghan is 8th. Really? He ha- he's actually ahead of Goudreau in goals. Oh, by two okay. goals. Goudreau is ninth. I was just seeing that and just thinking, wow, it's crazy. But, you know, Monaghan is there, you know, one behind Al McInnes. It's crazy to think, like, if they, 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 kept, with the, they kept on the team, like, what they could what they could have done, right? Um, but anyways, look, looking to the future, though, Nazem Kadri, love this signing. I love this signing in the sense that we have the player that we get. The signing is going to suck <laughs> and Three to four years. We all know this. No <laughs> Flames fan is dumb enough to be like, yeah, we got a steal, man. Seven years. Woo! <laughs> How old is he going to be in seven years? I think 38. Uh, he's like, yeah, sure, he's Dano. already like in his decent 30s. But I think just like... Actually, before we even get into uh, more oh, Kadri talk. He's 31. Talk, so yeah, he is 31? Yeah. Okay, before we get into more Kadri talk, I did want to mention this quickly. So... The player, uh, the amount of players left remaining from the 2020 bubble playoff year is eight. Eight is it? For, on the Flames roster, it's eight. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That is insane. That is yeah. just, that was two no years Gary ago. No Brian, no Toby Reader. No Gaudreau, no, no Monaghan. No Gustafson. Yep. No, no Talbot. <laughs> no, yeah. I was going to say, say Mike Smith, bro. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> we don't have either goalie from that year. No Giordano. Nope. No, Dirk TJ Brody. Forbert was it? Yeah, I think he was on there. No, TJ Brody. Yeah, like uh, who else? Oh, oh I bet there's a buddy. <laughs> one of the names I saw on there was Bubby, Buddy Robertson. Buddy Rock, <laughs> absolute legend. Absolute, absolute flames of legend dude, over here, dude. I, I was thinking in my head when Gaudreau first got signed because he's he's like best friends with Buddy Robinson. I'm like, is his brother is actually a part of the Columbus organization, Eric Robinson? Oh, I'm yeah. thinking. Do you think Columbus maybe is going to promise to get Buddy on the team? You know what I mean? Is oh, it the kind of yeah. sign thing? It never happened, so I don't think so. But I, at first I was thinking maybe. Um, I guess that kind of works out like that. That's this, a crazy thing. Like, it's changed so much, and that's just been, what, just over two years. Like, I remember, like, when we were watching those games, you know, uh, like it was yesterday. It's crazy how, like, two years goes by so fast in that sense. You know what though, for like two for, for how much the team has changed in two years, I gotta give a lot of respect for Tree Living of handling a situation like that, especially this off season when you have two potential stars leave 
and one you got an amazing return on, and the other just kind of left empty-handed. So you had a lot of cap space to play with. Yeah. So you got you signed Manjapani back, you signed uh, Oliver Shillington. I didn't really like you guys signing uh, Zadorov back. I'm low-key, not gonna lie. And then you go out and get Kadri. I didn't like the, I didn't hate the deal, but I don't love it because Kadri. Yes, he. I'm I'm really shocked he the got ca- seven. The cap hit is better. The hockey I was saying this that apparently was already reporting that the Islanders were offering about the seven to seven to seven five to eight mil range, and Colorado was testing for about six million. And I guess the reason why it took so long to get a signing, I think Gaudry was looking to see if it was possible to come back to Colorado. Not happening. So yeah, it's really nice that he that, you know chose this team and stuff. Um, but he was saying in this interview, like, he's a Canadian boy, loves loves the city, loves, of course, the country, right? So it's nice. We're getting these, It's funny, hey? You know, we lose some American players, we're getting all these Canadians back, and it's like, <laughs> you get some Canadians in there. I'm just saying, though, I mean, you, you look at Stanley Cup team, there's a lot of Canadians on them. Yeah, there is, A lot of is, very dominant sure. Canadians. I mean, there's, I don't think their nationality has anything to really do with anything anymore. Because I think, I mean, you can we see just the World Juniors, right? We just have a bunch of Swedes right? now. Like, those, fin- <laughs> those Finns, man. Like, I mean, I'm watching them. Their, their defense... I think was a, mo- a lot of times in the game better than Canada. Like I, I think Finland plays a Canadian style hockey now to a T, like really well, really consistent. So I don't think it matters really anymore. I but. think when you look at that, you gotta. I think like Finland is kind of a, like very underrated for player development because like you look at your big boys, like you look at Canada, you look at uh, US, you look at Russia, those big development players countries, right, for hockey. But I think Finland's like still up there contending with those guys, and oh, you're even seeing it like in the last few but years. It hasn't been. Yeah, it's, it's just start. I mean, it's just been like that for maybe 10, 15 years. A damn, like, Czechia players, Slovak, right? Slavkovsky, right? Yeah, Slavkovsky. Uh, your first Germany, overall pick this year. Germany is underrated. Think of it, like, dry oh, style, right? <laughs> There's a lot of Germans that are coming into the thing. I mean, like, I mean, when Timmy Stutzla, when he starts, you know, getting up, like, when he starts developing and becomes a really dominant player for the Sens, yeah, right? So, I wouldn't be surprised if he breaks kind of out in, like, a year or two. He could have a breakout year next year. Well, I could this year. I mean, if Ottawa plays how, like, they could play, Goodness, oh, man. Oh, they could be deadly could, on could paper. could be solidified to have a playoff spot, which is just crazy to think. Like, what a retool, but... Um, yeah, crazy. Imagine. But anyways, back to Kadri. We kind of went a little bit off topic. But anyways, about the Kadri deal, I I don't mind the money. The seven year, uh, the seven mil is a... I, I'm okay with it for an 80-point player like that. And the years kind of suck, but you kind of got to look at it in a sense of... Oh, you're trying to get the three to four best years out of him, and then there's a possibility you could trade him. But it really just depends on where do you think this team will go, or do you see this team rebuilding at a certain point? But exactly, right. you get the prime years, and I mean, of course, this proves that the team is in win now mode. Yeah, I pretty mean, much. like it's crazy, right? Like, like it's funny how uh, it happened a month ago. Now we lost Johnny, so it's like you you have that happen and just. Crazy emotions, this roller coaster, but man, it's really done a great job. This team's completely reshaped, but this got the tool. It's funny because the naysayers of Calgary, which they were right, ultimately they were. You could not win with Gaudreau and Kachuk at the helm. And it, it's true, it didn't happen. Yeah. But they got, we're getting the retail that people have been saying that they need. And what, like, what an offseason. Like, I just, I, I, don't have, I don't think I have ever seen. A team have an off season like this ever? That is, and a- the fact that it's our team, like the team that we've been cheering for since we were like born, pretty special, right? It, so it I, is. I, I'm a, loving it. It is a total special moment because, like, I'm not gonna lie, that you really don't see retools like this so quickly, especially when you're in a win now situation. You don't no. see crazy big moves like this, and. As I put, as I look at it, Brad Tree Living sense, you upgraded the defense, uh, taking out Eric Branson Heavily with Uyghur, man. and that's already a huge oh. upgrade to a crazy defense you have from last year. Then you add Huberto to your first line lineup, so that's your Johnny replacement. Kadri is just another centerman for depth, and he's still an eighty point player most of the time, and that's still a crazy but upgrade. You know what I think that does? It puts back on the third s- center. Line. Yeah. But that's where I think he's always been. Nothing against Backlund. Oh, yeah. I think he's a solid third line center. But it's just the fact that he's like that solidified now. I mean, that's depth, man. I mean, I don't. 
Your top nine impressive. looks nuts right now. I could tell you that. If right, so the prediction, the predicted lineups for next season for the Flames are kind of looking like this right now. So we have Jonathan Huberto first line with Elias Lindholm and Tyler Toffoli. That even that first line's not even. It's, I don't think it gets the success that the Gaudreau. A Gaudreau to Kachuk home line has in this first season. I'll be honest, I think this team will probably struggle a little bit at the start, just getting chemistry together. Yeah. But they're all skillful that I could see this being, I could see Toffoli having a bounce back season. I could see Huberto, you know, I could see him breaking 100 points again, 90, 100 points. I can see Lindholm still there? getting 35 plus. I really do. Yeah, he could even hit 40 if you really want. And then we move to the second line. We have Blake Coleman, Kadri, and Manjapani. And that, honestly, that just sounds a lot better than the back when Coleman uh, Manjapani line, but that's that's still really, that's really hard to beat. But with Kadri in that centerman now, it's it's great to have. And then you will look at our third line. They put Jacob Peltier, and he was in our system in the AHL, and he had a great last season. So I wouldn't be surprised if he tries making the jump. Anyways, I don't think he's missed a step. I think Rajiska gets on this line instead of Peltier. Uh, yeah, actually, I wouldn't be surprised, but... So, so far you have Peltier here, Backlund, and Dubé on that third line. And I I really, I wouldn't be surprised if Dubé takes that next step too because he was even showing a lot of improvement throughout the last part of the season. Very Didn't much see so. it much in playoffs, but still, I he's young. He's still developing, so I would love to see what he takes for next oh, year. Oh, that would be why Regis is not on this lineup yet because he's an RFA. I forgot about that. I mean... Oh, we haven't signed him. I, I, I think he's going to get signed. Yeah. I don't see why he wouldn't, but I can see that Paul Jay could make that step. Very much so. Yeah. Um, It's just... I'm a little... Man, I don't know if I could see him being on the third line just because being a younger player just coming up from the farm, I don't know, but it makes sense for the fourth line it being Rooney... Lou Cheech and Lewis. Yeah. I think that makes sense. That's such a that's such a gritty fourth line, you know, dump the puck in, get the first line out kind of thing. Even if you put Lu- heavy hitting. Even if you put Lucic up on the third and then put Ruziska on that fourth line, I still think yeah. that's pretty good. I guess we have to think of if Ruziska's not on this team yet though, because he hasn't been signed. I, I think he does, but I just I wonder I don't know why it hasn't happened yet. It's kinda uh, odd in my opinion. I mean they're Same probably going through a lot of they just went through a lot of signings and stuff, so maybe maybe it'll give it like a yeah. week. <laughs> no, for sure. Brad Tree Living needs to sit back and be like, Oh, I just made a lot of deals in the last week. I need a minute. So. One thing I also disagree with too is I think Coleman's gonna stick with Backland. So actually Peltier You could see Dubé. I him. could see Dubé just Majapani can play left wing. I, so it yeah. could be Majapani, Dubé, and Kadri. I think that's still a great. And then the third line would be a little. Oh, I would love that actually. Wouldn't be as. Coleman, Lucic, and yeah. Bla- Backlund, and then you have maybe Rusiska. Sorry, sorry. Coleman, Backlund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coleman, Backlund, like Lucic, and then Rooney. Rusiska for the signum or Peltier or Zari, that... whoever goes in that like last spot. How about Coronado? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's looking great in the World Juniors, man? Yeah, that honestly, as a forward, like. I think that's a little bit of an improvement to, like, not star power on the team, but just, like, you're down the depth line because that that is a lot of improvement. Even if you look at the defense right now, uh, it's even telling us right now for the defense, we got Noah Hannafin and Anderson are first. You got Mackenzie Weger and uh, Chris Tanev as our second pairing, and Zadorov and Oliver Shillington as our third. And that even sounds pretty good. I find Tanev really helps Shillington. I almost think Shillington sticks with Tanev. Yeah, I. But I all I know is that what we're can talk and complaining about proves that there's depth, yeah. right? That the players can play with whoever, and that it's not like, although Zadorov has had its has his struggles and stuff, he's. I think he fits in the Sutter system. I think he played better because of the Sutter system. So that is. True. I'm excited for that, and then, you know. Our our like, two main. Then we still have our two main okay. goalies in Markstrom and uh, Lavdar still. So. Overall, we're going in with a little bit of a change to the offense and defense, but I think it's going to be a positive in both. I still ways. think it's solid. I, I still think we're. I think we're still could potentially take the first spot in the Pacific. The problem for me is that. Uh oh. This no 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 no. <laughs> I know this is the team, but what True Living has done is made me want more, right? I just want Sony Milano, man. Sony Milano on that third line. How about this? Backlund, Sony Milano, Dubé. Oh! Or Coleman, like, Milano, Backlund. Oh, that would be a 
filthy third line, right. but yeah. I'll take that. I I don't know what's happening. Tree Living, you see, he sounds like he, the way he's like talking when when he's asked like, "Are you done now?" Like he just doesn't want to like say no. Or I mean, that makes sense, right? You don't want to you know let them know what your you next wanna, move is. But yeah, I could see him doing something even more. I just I guess we'll see. Luchis might be out of that equation, right? Uh, and it's probably talked about that he might, you know, lose him. You know, get his space out, and then I guess that you could have, then would have the money to sign someone like a Milano, and then your fourth line for sure would have like Paul Cheers, Rosjiska, whoever is getting signed there. Oh the yeah, young guy to be there, and I'm okay with having a young guy on the fourth line. I think that some of them just uh, is good that they can step up, and that it's like you know we always talk, look at like our AHL affiliate team, and like oh these players are good, they finally eventually need to get a spot in the lineup, right? Oh yeah, you know it's like they're gonna like it seems that like a lot of them kind of rotted away. Because mm-hmm. of that, so it's nice that they can, you know, some of them can get a chance. But as of right now, on the paper, on the computer screen, is it better than the one that we had last year? So I would say for like star power, no. But like for overall potential depth down the line, yes. Because adding Kadri to that second line, it's just a huge step because you you took out Backlund and moved on the third, and now you have a true second line center. And then you still have Elias Lindholm with a lot of star power with Huberto. And then even if you make that, if Tyler Toffoli can make that next bounce back year, I I think this team could look better down the line, even when you go in the playoffs. Because, like, yeah, you are you made a good point. Ty, uh, Gaudreau and Kachuk was never going to be the guys to pull us that way. And there is more potential that this could bring us somewhere. Very much so. The defense, 100%. Weger just coming automatically makes this, just the depth, just way more uh, I guess deep. I, I don't even know what, whatever. Deep. whatever the, it, it, yeah, it just, makes the, it just makes the defensive pairings more deep. Um, and that fighting for that seventh spot too, right? There's a fight there, and that's great to see. So for sure that goalie, same thing. Curtis can't change it. Now the forward group. Okay, you really have it in this sense. Place Kachuk in the sense of the skill because Kadri and Kachuk have similarities because they got the grit or how true living ex- explained them as a snarl to them. Yeah, for sure. Snarl. But they are different <laughs> players. They really are different players. And so that for some reason, whatever. But Huberto is like that kind of good drill replacement. I think and, be you know, of course, there's a lot of... In some ways, Huberto's better than Johnny. In some ways, Johnny Hockey's better than Huberto, right? So yeah. we'll see how it all fits out. But I gotta say this, though. I To me, it still proves that Elias Lindholm is one of the most... I'm not gonna say he is the number one, but I think he is definitely up there as one of the most underrated players in this league. He has to be at this point. Oh, because yes. Because watching that power play, and uh, he was the catalyst for that power play. Yes. And I don't think... Those other players would have got their forty plus goals or a hundred points without Lindholm and vice versa, mm-hmm. right? But I really think Lindholm really held to his own, and I think he just his skill and stuff got undershadowed by, by um, Kachuk by and Kachuk Kachuk and Goodrow, mm-hmm. right? And just their superstar skill. I mean, oh, you ask a Flames fan, man, they love Lindholm. There are Lindholm jerseys everywhere. I've noticed that. I never oh. really thought about it, but it's you know when you go to the dome and stuff like you see, of course you see your Johnnies, you see your Irginlas, and your. I see a lot of Robin Regeers. Those are the best Robin ones, Regeer Craig jerseys. Ones, Those are the best. Do you have enough ones, too? I've not, noticed yeah. <laughs> yeah. all, all that, but I see a lot of Lindholm jerseys. We love him here, man. And I like, I, he's, he's a goal screw. He's a sniper, man. He's got a great shot. That one team, man, that he can do. Especially oh, on the power goodness. play, he's nuts. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying Huberto can pass the puck. Yeah. So, that'll be nice. So, we'll see how it all works out. But, ultimately... You know what? And in the sense of this, these players that have come in with the Sutter system, I think on paper maybe we are better. I think so. Like, yeah, in depth and everything, it looks... <sighs> Skill-wise, like if you're playing this team in like NHL 23, maybe not. But I want to say that's hopeful, but of course, we could get the Kadri that gets suspended for the entire playoff series, right? Uh, we could get that Huberto right. that needs Alex Sasha Bar- or needs Sarsa Barkov and doesn't. Yeah. It's very possible, right? But and, and maybe we get the Lindholm that, oh, Lindholm actually didn't need like Johnny and, and Kachuk. No. Mm-hmm. But it's possible. Wow. I think, I'm going to say yes. I'll say yes. The team's better. Just because of center depth, for depth and defensive depth. Simple as that. 
But so I just wanted to, I went on the cap friendly and kind of looked at Calgary's situation right now. So in twenty the twenty twenty uh, five pick was the Flames, not Florida's pick. I did just notice oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yes, was, I did just notice that. And then the Flames still have about two million left in cap space. But we do have the money to re-sign Ruzishka, so I could see the potential oh, yeah. signing of Ruzishka in the next week. And if they do try adding another just depth piece, they probably might have to trade Lucic. But if we're gonna trade for Milano, who's younger, yeah, uh, let's actually let's look at uh, Milano's uh, stats here. Actually, yeah, go ahead. Uh, but. I just really want Milano. Apparently, Pacific's getting interesting. Oh. I'm telling you. Okay. So, uh, I think that the Pacific Division is going to be highly underrated this year because I think Edmonton, okay, people are really just finding any type of special stat to, you know, talk absolute garbage about Jack Campbell. But I think with the just... team like that in front of them, I think they'll be fine. So, I think Edmonton's going to be fine. I think Vegas is going to have a come. I think Logan Thompson is going to honestly perform really well and i think vegas is going to fight their way back to a playoff spot i think calgary's fine you're going to have a playoff spot but i think vancouver is going to be fighting there as well as long as well as the young la core right mm -hmm. i really think there's five teams and of course they're not they're not better than than like the eastern <laughs> divisions but i think there's five teams there, man they, they could be putting up a fight with any team yeah i really do think so i i I really think there's a lot of underdogs, and I think that's what makes the Pacific Division more intriguing. And I would like it because I hate when people are always saying that the Pacific Division is the worst division because then it makes it feel like anytime the Flames do something, it's invalid. People mm -hmm. kind of almost sometimes take it like that. Not all, but I don't really like that too much just because I don't think it's fair. Yeah. And so that sounds, I mean, this is a dumb little argument that I have, but I think the Pacific Division is going to be way. Better and more entertaining than I think people think. I think I, th I, I think you're on the right boat with that, to be honest. Because when I'm just looking at the division entirely right now, and yeah, low key, you only truly have three teams trying to re go into a rebuild right now. Anaheim is on their uh, kind of wave with a rebuild right now. San Jose, it, you just saw them trade away Brett Burns, and that was clarifying. Hey, we're going to that rebuild, so. And then Seattle, they, they drafted Shane Wright. They're on the ups, but still going to take a couple of years before they truly, actually probably Calgary, and then we'll flip in a few years. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. But no, yeah, probably. Seattle is on that build up to be on the rebuild. So they're doing pretty good. But yeah, Vegas, Vancouver is up there. The young core in Los Angeles, Edmonton and Calgary. It's it's going to be a little bit of a dogfight to get into those last spots and playoffs for sure. No. So I, I totally think that, it's going to be a dogfight. It's going to be fun to watch. It's, it's going to be intriguing. I, I think every game, I'm just, I just can't wait for hockey now. I was, you know, now that I'm back from my vacation and stuff, I'm like, yeah, it's hockey season again. I'm ready. I'm excited. Oh, we're so excited um, for it. So let me kind of go into more detail as to why Sonny Milano, I think, would be a good fit. And then we can go back more into the casual thing. So I want to talk sure. about that as well. And him fitting in the setter system. Sonny Milano is, an, is a left wing. Which works out because to me that word say even if you like let go of Lucic for some cap space and stuff, then you have your young guy on the fourth line, but then Milano is on that third line, like I said, and then you have like Backlund or Dubé or Backlund and Coleman. So I think that would make her top nine just filthy, whatever. just absolute filthy I think top filthy, nine. <laughs> and, and I think Milano's, I think right now Suda is perfect. He's 26 years old. Last season he had 66 games play or played 66 games, 14 goals, 20 assists with the Ducks team, right? That was young upcoming, but I really thought that he had a lot of impact. I think he really helped Zegers. I think they complemented each other. That So yeah. I I can see that as, you know, he's got a little bit of skill that's been untouched that I think, you know, can be really Sought out, especially with a good coach like like Daryl Sutter, I think he can really get out get out, out out get a lot out of him, Um yeah, huh. so that's what I think. I don't know. That's just me, just wishful thinking. But I think maybe one more depth piece signing would be pretty nice. Then I'm gonna be like, Ooh, I don't know. I just I'm asking for way more just because of how much we've gotten. Thank you, truth. And I mean, man, I don't know. I was I had my doubts, but. I can't even. I can't. You can't even hate about this off season. You can't. No. Like we. What do you play with his cards? It was. It was. Like he's just. I don't know. Just came back. It's just came out of the grade. It seems like or something. But he really took a gamble on this off season. Yeah, I gotta it, respect that. I've, he really did. And of course, we don't know if it works until the, the actual production happens. But right now, it's looking very intriguing. And the fact that most like fans 
or looking at it with great interest means that it was pretty significant, right? So yeah. that's pretty impressive. So I actually do like the idea of adding Sonny Milano to this lineup as a death piece. He did actually show a lot of promise going with the Ducks. And there is a decent possibility we could afford him. We He had about like 1.7 mil contract. So with his career, he could possibly be asking about for three or four. But that's also looking at his age. So yeah. there might be the potential that you could see even Lucic leaving the team if he does want to take that risk. But just with the veteran leadership that Lucic brings to the team and everything, it might be a stretch. But I would love to see a pickup like that. That would yeah, be great. Yeah, no, that, that's Def. why I'm being such a like a big fanboy of him right now is because I just I just think that he fits so well. Flames fans Toronto are getting be greedy crazy. because they're seeing these trades, and now we're like, give me, give me, give me more, give me, give me more, exactly. give me more. <laughs> um, so we we speak of Lucic and what does Lucic have? He has playoff experience more or less is one of Stanley Cup. So now we get Kadri. Let's see. Okay. Tafoli's won a cup. Coleman's won a cup. Two cups, I guess. So is Tafoli's won two cups. Anyways. Kadri's won a cup. So that's three. Oh. Lucci's won a cup. Trevor Luce has won a cup. Anyways, uh. we have... What I'm trying to say is we have five players who have who've won Stanley Cups. Meaning, the more and more we progress, this team has gained more playoff experience... And more Stanley Cup experience, which is crucial in my opinion, because that means that these players know what it takes to win. They got that heart and hustle, man. And that's why, like, I mean, that's why we always love Coleman here. Like, yeah, he doesn't get the points. And I know that the contract sucks a little bit, but it's like, man, he plays with heart. I just love, I never had really had a problem with him in the playoffs because he was always fighting. Yeah. He's always fighting for, for the net, for net front presence, right? And so that is what's so intriguing. And so to me, it's like you see Kadri, how he plays, right? And that's why he won a cup. He deserved to win a cup because he plays like a Stanley Cup champion. Yeah, that's how I see it. So now that we have players like that, it makes me, gives me even more confidence that uh, um, if we make playoffs, I think you can make a pretty solid run. And I don't think you're going to be, you know, just flicked away really easily like a booger or something like that. I really think that there's going to be some fight this entire season. That's what I'm really excited for. Um, and I just think, yeah, like I said, I, I, as well too, I mean, Nazem Kaji, I think he just fits in with the Sutter, uh, the Sutter system so well. Yeah, oh, he's a Sutter goodness, man. I think I think Kadri's more of a Sutter player. I just, I'm just saying, man, it's a tough team. I mean... It truly is. It's... It's going to be fun. It's For us, it's going to be entertaining to watch, right? Battle of Alberta's are going to be really cool, too, oh, with Kaiser and Kane. Oh, they the, don't seem to like each other. Right? Yeah, they don't. They really don't. Battle of Alberta's going to be so fun to watch this year. Three. It's, not, it's sad it's only three games unless they meet in playoffs again. Then I'll probably not be able to handle that. But you do make a good point, and I think that was like one thing that was bugging a lot of Flames fans with... Gaudreau, Kachuk, and Monaghan being on the team is the lack of, like, playoff deep runs. Because, like, we would always, like, have a great regular season with those players, and we get the playoffs and get smacked either first or second round. And that that bugged a lot of Flames fans because we had no playoff deep experience to be able to take that. No, and it seemed like the way they would play sometimes, it just, they didn't have that drive to push themselves no they didn't say and it really you could tell like some games when the team would let off the gas and i think a lot of that could be because like your catalysts aren't setting an example so yeah. i wonder if these new players who are more leadership as players can set a better example yeah exactly right? and like that's what i'm was actually going to take that point to right to because like now you have these veteran leadership players that know what it truly takes to win and you have a totally different lineup and who really knows what could happen next year? Because you you could see a crazy run with this team, or you could see it go to shambles. And honestly, I guess there's only one way to find out. Right? We'll take our chances. I'm excited. Though. All I know is I can't wait for October. Yeah. But hey, guys, that is the end of Flames Talk for this episode. I just want to thank you guys for tuning into this episode. Also, 
congratulations again to Team Canada taking gold in Edmonton. That'd be boys taking an OT. And hey, um, I'll actually let you wrap this up because I started it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again very much for listening to another episode of our podcast. If you did enjoy it, smash that like button. Leave a comment if you have any uh, things to say. What do you think about this signing? Do you think it's uh, too long, too short, too whatever? Uh, do you think it uh, makes a team better? Do you think it makes it worse? Just let us know. And as well, you can follow us on Instagram, uh, YouTube, TikTok, Buzzsprout, Spotify, you name it. Places like those. We also have our website. Check it out. Website dot stuff dot slash podcast dot com. Where we're, we'll, we'll eventually get some more blogs, posts out and stuff. But we have that, and of course, you can find the podcast there. And anyways. Boys, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're so close to 50. Please get oh, us to 50. That'd be very nice. Please subscribe, boys. Oh, but anyways. Anyways, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. And remember, keep on uh, Rock praising <laughs> uh, Mason McTavish for that save in the free world. And uh, we'll see you boys later. See you in the next one, boys. Peace. Peace.